Welcome to Bet On. I'm Kelly Stewart, your host tonight. We're going to break down this week's NFL card with Yanni the Greek Gambler and Marco D'Angelo. Let's get this week started. Primetime games, Sunday and Monday night. Sunday night, Philadelphia at Dallas. Currently, Dallas minus three, total 49. VR, I'll go to you first. <sighs> Tough game, man. I mean, right away, I, I, I thought there's going to be some value on the Dallas Cowboys because of how undervalued the market has them right now. I mean, there's nothing much to, to get excited about with how Dallas has looked the last couple of weeks. And more importantly, the narrative is the team's kind of given up on the head coach. I mean, I, I listen to sports radio, that's all everyone's talking about, that on the sidelines, the players aren't talking amongst each other. They're sliding the head coach and not even looking in his direction or talking. And when you hear that kind of stuff, if it's true where there's smoke, there's fire, you need to worry. Um, but with that said, I mean, I think there's some value on the Dallas Cowboys in this spot. I really do, man. And I, I could tell you this, what did they bet? Um, sharp money came in over on the over. And uh, again, a lot of times they'll get out ahead of the market, um, especially on primetime games because of the fact they know more times than not, that's where the public money's gonna go. And even though individually betting, the public doesn't get respect, when they all bet together on one side, the line's gonna move to reflect that money. So could it be a case of, of betting syndicates getting out ahead of the market? Maybe, we'll find out later on the weekend if they buy back or if they set it up, I don't know for sure. But I can tell you that the, they did buy, uh, go over 48 and a half. And again, I like Dallas at minus three. I also like Dallas in this spot. You're right, it is worrisome, but I bet against the Eagles last week. I don't think this Eagles team is as great as they've been made out to be. Marco, your thoughts on Philly getting three at Dallas? Yeah, it uh, doesn't get any worse for Dallas yeah. losing last week. They've lost three in a row, and what you're talking about with the coaches, if you saw there was a couple clips on it floating around Twitter on Sunday, his players were coming off the field, you know, Jason Garrett's got his hand out, you know, trying, you know, high five or whatever off of a good series or whatever, and they're just walking by him, yeah, you know, yeah. leaving him hanging. You That's know? worrisome. That is a problem and a concern, but they're facing a team here that if that offense isn't able to move the football this week, Dak Prescott can, you know, start rethinking that big contract that he wants because Kurt Cousins last week <laughs> was 22 of 29 for 325 yards. That's all you got to say about this Philadelphia defense is when Kirk Cousins can do that Lights to you, you yeah. you're supposed to be able to do it. Now, let's give Philadelphia a little bit of a break. They do have a ton of injuries. This team's been banged up. The secondary's not been healthy all year. So that's been a concern. And that's why I think, Ace, you're seeing them get in front of the market on betting the over early because we know come Sunday – there's only one way the public's going to bet that. Yeah, bet you're that right. Game. You're right. So they want to get in on the ground floor, which was the 48, 48 and a half, uh, probably gets to 50 by Sunday. This is a spot, though, I do agree with the Dallas side. I don't like Philadelphia here. I don't think they're going to be able to stop Dallas. Uh, I know Dallas has had some injuries on the offensive side that slowed them down. But you got embarrassed last week. You weren't able to score against the Jets. Jets. This is a problem. I like them. They should be able to run the football in this game against Philadelphia some, but it's going to be the passing game that's going to be the key here because that's Philadelphia's Achilles heel. I'm going to go ahead and take them. The Philadelphia defense, guys, with the exception of the game against the Jets where we had Luke Falk, a quarterback, okay, they've given up 24 or more points in every game this year. No, re no wonder they're jumping on the over already. I like Dallas, and if I had to agree, I would think, yeah, you'd have to look to the over for the game as well. All right, Monday night, another divisional game, New England at the Jets. New England minus 9.5, total 42.5. Marco, I'm going to stick with you here. This is a primetime home dog situation that I probably don't want to get involved in. I'm Sammy D's back. You don't like Sammy D? I mean, I played him last week. He's healthy. You can kiss him now. He's okay. <laughs> Woof. All right. Your thoughts on this matchup? Okay, so you won't kiss Sammy D, but, you know, we were talking in break. You'll, you'll, you'll eat Mountain Oysters. We're talking about different food <laughs> during the break that people have eaten. We're talking about sea urchins. We're talking about octopus. Yeah. I'm from the Midwest. It's called a calf fry. Get over it. <sighs> 
I, my dad was a butcher. I get over it. I know. I'm sorry. I was there when they were, you know. Yeah. Bison, bison. <laughs> Kelly, this game here, I like this game on Monday night. I like the under. And we're looking at 42 and a half. And I'll tell you what you're going to see and what people are going to do with this game. This is one of the uh, – might be the first second meeting of the season uh, so second, far. yeah. Uh, they've already played. And the public's going to look and see that first game. They're going to see the score was 30 to 14. The over-under was 43 in that game. And they scored a total of 44 points. So, John Q. Public's going to say, well, that was with – Luke Falk at quarterback, and they still managed to get the 44 points. So now we got Sammy D. We saw what he did last week with Dallas. They should easily go over 42 and a half, and we already know. How many defensive touchdowns are they going to get in this game? Yeah, <laughs> that, that could be the problem. But talking defensively, the fact that Sammy D is back actually makes the Jets' defense better because they're not going to be on the field as long uh, because they're going to not have all those three and out plays in your punt and giving the other team great field position. They're going to actually be able to drive some, have some field position, then punt. I like this game under, and I like it a lot. And uh, this is a spot where, again, like last week when I said with the under, and it almost bit me because it – in the morning, I said, wait till Monday. But I did say, wait till like that last hour before the game because that's when you're going to get the peak number. But when I woke up Monday morning and I saw 45 and a half on the game when it was 47, I said, oh, boy. I said, I hope that doesn't come back to bite me. But I waited until game time. And lo and behold, and there's a couple shops tick, here tick, in town tick, tick, tick. that are square shops. They're going to get that money in that last hour, everybody betting. The John Q. Public only bets one way. He's going to be betting New England. And he's going to be betting over. I'm taking the under here. Uh, for the game itself, I don't have anything, but I do like the under 42 and a half, and I think you'll get more come Monday. VR, your thoughts on Monday night? I, I agree with the under as well. I mean, listen, this New England defense is legit, and more importantly, they're not letting anybody score on them. I mean, they, they're allowing eight points per game overall, five less than six points per game on the road. They've been double-digit favorites in four of their six games. I mean, New England's New England. And again, we say it over and over like a broken record. You don't get rich fading New England. And yet, I can promise you, come Monday night, there will be buy orders on New England, on the <laughs> Jets, plus 10 for multiple betting syndicates. And I'll be forced to take plus 10 on the Jets and take a percentage of that and cheer them in because I don't want that bet to lose, obviously. And wondering why are they betting against New England again? <laughs> um, and that's what's going to happen Monday night. So I'm telling you now, my money's going to be on the under. It's going to be on, new, on the Jets. Um, probably not because of me pulling that out of my own pocket, but because I'm betting it for different groups, they're going to be on the Jets, which puts me on the Jets, <laughs> unfortunately. And that's the side, man. I mean, listen, I think it's a lot of points, dude. I mean, they already played Jets covered, getting that Jets 20 points. What? Without With scoring an offensive yeah, touchdown. They, touchdown. they didn't yeah. score, and, and they, they were able to cover. So, I, I mean, I think it's a spot where they can cover this game. The only thing is New England doesn't have really anything on deck to look ahead. Like, you know what I mean? There's a reason for them to play, and – it scares me, but I'm telling you, I'll be on the Jets because I'll be forced to be on the Jets. It, but let's not forget, Belichick's never forgot the Jets and all the problems that, you know, when they ratted him out with the uh, spy. Yeah, gate. true. It's not my fault that the Patriots like to cheat, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they don't like when somebody rats them out. Snitches you get stitches. You trying, <laughs> yeah, you go. If he ain't cheating, he ain't trying. <laughs> Mantra. Great stuff, guys. We're going to step out for a quick break. When we return, we're going to dig inside the numbers as we look at which NFL games have moved the most and why. That's up next on Bet on It. This week, only at SportsMemo.com, get a seven-day all-access package from your favorite Sports Memo handicapper for just $69. This gets every play, including 5% plays, which sell for $40 by themselves. With this special offer, you're getting seven days for less than $10 a day. Hurry, this is a limited-time offer and only available at SportsMemo.com. Get $25 in wager bucks added to your account after your first purchase at wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com. This is just our way of saying thank you for joining the Wager Talk and Sports Memo family. Okay, guys, it's time to take a deep dive into some of these lines that have moved. As you guys now know, the Westgate here in Las Vegas always puts out NFL lines a week before, about 12 days approximately. They call them the 
look at headlines. You can bet next week's games. For this week's games are even played. Once this week's games are played, next week's line is going to change. But the question is, are these moves justified or just an overreaction by the public? Mark, I'm going to start with you. Kansas City at Denver. Open Kansas City minus four and a half. Now Kansas City minus three. Yeah, uh, no. Hell no. <laughs> I'm not talking about this game. I don't want hate mail. Go ahead, BR. You can have Kansas City. It's I'll, all yours, buddy. I'll take that. <laughs> I think I should do a bow. I exposed oh, Kansas oh, City. How long oh, ago did I expose this Kansas City team <laughs> as being phony as a $3 at, at bill? Underscore gambler, uh, again, guys. the best regular season team in the NFL loses again. Um, sadly, Kansas City fans thought they were going to come into this season and just bet the Chiefs every week and turn a profit for the year. Not going to happen. Uh, why? Because unlike last year where no one expected them to come out of nowhere, um, the market knew, the odds makers knew that people like to bet the Kansas City Chiefs. They looked the part last year. Unfortunately, we know better. We're able to dig a little deeper and wipe that facade out of the way and, and see what's there. And there's not much there. Um, it's all about offense. That's not how you win in, in the NFL, especially come playoff time. Um, I absolutely think this one's going to think this closes like one and a half. Here, here's what I'm going to tell you. This line opened Kansas City minus four and it was four points too high. That's the bottom line. Kansas City has no business going into Denver on a short week in this high altitude, laying this many points, um, the wrong side, I wouldn't go as far as saying the wrong side's favored, uh, but points are for pussies on this one. You, you don't need it. I'm sorry, I have to say it. Because this has plus money line sprinkle written all over it. And for <laughs> some reason, this total's dropping. That looks like the setup of, of all well, yeah, setups. The, the Broncos, I think, have, are like 12 and that's 2 why. beyond that's or something why. ridiculous. That's exactly yeah. why. And it's coming down, it's coming down, it's coming down. I like the over as well, man. I mean, no secret there. I want to see how low this gets. Uh, but I see this going into the 50s for sure. Uh, but the short money is Denver. Money line. I All right. I, I don't know, Ace. I think secretly you're a Kansas City Chief. You're, you're wearing, wearing Kansas the red. City. He's got the Kansas red Kansas City red on the Chiefs. Well, yeah, you're on. the best regular season team in all of football. It's okay. You can come out and tell them that you like Kansas City <laughs> Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> I love Patrick Rouse. Mahomes. Oh. But Matt, Patrick Mahomes does not play defense. He does not. And that is such a liability for that team. All right, Miami at Buffalo. Buffalo opened minus 15 and a half, now minus 17. No surprise, Marco. Uh, the Dolphins lose, which we kind of knew they wanted to for a draft pick. But yeah, but they, um, made, they made it look they like they, 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 made it look yeah, like they, they wanted to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we don't. <laughs> Okay, kind of well, like my horse in yeah, we're good, we're yeah. Good. Yeah. led the whole way and uh, finished third at the wow. yeah went, did the backstroke the last uh, eighth of a sixteenth of a mile there but they third will get a little bit Miami it, the line is what it is because it's Miami it's, right. they, they lost that was the only game that they had a shot really to win and they did and Buffalo had a bye week and you know the line was fifteen and a half before they didn't play you know it's seventeen. Uh, this is a line that do you really want to lay 17 though with Buffalo? Uh, it's justified. Uh, They've got a very underrated defense. This team's for real. And if Allen continues to progress, this is a team that could make some noise in the playoffs. Are they going to overcome New England? Probably not. But they're in line, you know, to get the next best record, and we'll see what happens with them and what they can do. We always talk about teams in playoffs. You've got to learn to win, you know, take the, the steps. This team might be a year or two away, but they're definitely heading in the right way. So the move is justified. Do I want to lay it? Uh, no. Am I going to take the Dolphins? Hell no. It's a game I won't be involved in. Yeah, and I, uh, <laughs> I was looking at Buffalo as maybe a potential survivor pick. And I'm still scared. Even at some, I, I feel like Miami is going to mess around and accidentally win one of these games. VR Oakland at Green Bay. Open Green Bay minus seven. Now it's down to Green Bay minus five and a half. Listen, I like what John Gruden's doing in Oakland. In Oakland, and uh, I was on them. Vegas. I was on them the last couple of weeks when they won outright as an underdog. I watched this Green Bay team on Monday night. Is this line move justified? Maybe, maybe not. Your thoughts? Yeah. I think it's it's kind of I mean, but that's with that, I feel. yeah. But with that said, 
you know, I mean, Oakland has, they, they had their bye week, uh, so not a bad spot for them. Um, I can tell you this, it was sharp money that's on the Oakland Raiders. Uh, we bet it at plus six. Uh, so that's why you're seeing this line move. It's wise guys that are betting it. I, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not in love with that pick, to be honest with you. But uh, I can't disagree either. All right, Marco, next up, we have the Rams at Atlanta. The Rams open minus four, now minus three. Looks like this morning they got Jalen Ramsey. That might be able to help out that defense a little bit. But as I said last week, who's laying points, taking points, even wanting to touch Atlanta? I will give a shout out to one of our main men, Prez. Prez said week two, I'm done messing with Atlanta. And I said, Prez, <laughs> now's the time to get on board with Atlanta. No, it's not. Atlanta cannot find the end zone. Atlanta has tons of talent. Matt Ryan's putting up a ton of points for his fantasy owners. But this team stinks. Yeah. Well, they're not having trouble finding the end zone. They scored 30 points exactly last year. They're having trouble keeping people out of the end zone is what, what the problem is. They can't stop anybody. Uh, Houston hung up 53 on them. Arizona. Arizona put 34 up on them. And to me, that's the, the, the final nail in the coffin. I, I think uh, Quinn's lost this team. And he's the know, next guy to get fired on the list. I think he's minus 125. Yeah, the only thing is the that particular um, owner and stuff generally doesn't uh, do that in season, but we'll see what happens. The Rams, they're no bundle of joy either right now. They've lost three in a uh, three in a row for the first time uh, in a long time. And last week at home in a great spot. I mean, they had San Francisco coming off a Monday night Jimmy game. G. Off the biggest game, you know, that was a statement game, national spotlight. It was supposed to be a flat spot. Even though it was a division game, it was supposed to be a flat spot. And they took it to them. I got flattened. Yeah, I mean, and Kelly, I agree. I bet the game, too. It was a spot where, you know, it's a situational spot. But now it's almost like they're pushing a the panic button with these uh, trades that they made this week. And they're going to come in. How they can't make an impact in in the first week in the system. It's so, very hard to learn the new system. But against this defense of Atlanta, the Rams got to score. To me, uh, I understand the move um, because the Rams lost again last week, and Atlanta's been doing what they've been doing. They look even worse losing to Arizona. But is it really worth a point? Uh, I hate to say it, if Atlanta's going to get up for a game, it's going to be a game like this against a marquee team, but I don't want any part of them. Uh, moves justified, I think three's the right number. Uh, we'll see if I get there. i definitely probably going to be looking at the total, though, and you can't be looking at the under, that's for sure. All right, San Francisco at Washington Open, San Fran minus eight and a half. Now skins plus ten. I want to like Washington here, but as you mentioned, do I want to step in front of this Niners freight train right now? They're rocking and rolling. I don't think I want to get involved here. Is this move, though, justified? Uh, it, I don't – I can understand why the move's there. I mean, there's going to be a ton of San Francisco money coming in come Sunday. There's going to be a ton of San Francisco teasers coming in on Sunday. So the books have to defend themselves. I understand the move. I liked San Francisco last week. I think this is their flat spot if they're going to have one. Again, they have coming in with a lot of momentum, but they've had some big games of late. Let's not forget, they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. They followed it up with a Monday night primetime game where they annihilated the Cleveland Browns, then had to show up against arguably their division rival. Um, th that was their biggest game to date. And they showed up and, and got it done and in impressive fashion. And I didn't think they would because the teams that they had played prior were so atrocious. Right. Like this team's way overvalued. Here's here's a spot where the Rams come in and win by 10. And I, I, I just, you know, back-to-back -back road games, double okay. digits. As, as much as Washington's looked bad of late offensively, remember I mean, they couldn't even cover against the Dolphins is what the exactly. public's going to see. They're exactly, exactly. exactly. The but if you remember earlier in the season, they were scoring some points. Yeah. And, and if you can do that, you they can, have so you can keep issues. the back door open. Yeah. Exactly. There's just a lot. We talked about from week one. This isn't a team you want to get excited about or back. And look, they've covered one game the entire season. Yeah. I've avoided Washington pretty much to date, but... All right, Marco, last but not least, Chargers at Tennessee. This one open pick, now Tennessee minus two and a half. Uh, if it gets to three, I, I may be looking at the Chargers, but uh, this is an interesting move. Mar Marcus Mariota gets benched. Insert Ryan Tannehill, speaking of Miami. Yeah. And now they're a two and a half point favorite. 
Well, that's the whole the whole reason for this move. It's an overreaction. They made the switch at quarterback, so everybody loves when it, you know they're going to the other guy because Mariota was struggling. But it's more so what happened to the Chargers on Sunday night. That was the spotlight game. Everybody saw it. Sunday night football. Steelers go in there with, as I said, virtually a fourth string quarterback in Hodges and manhandled them from the get go. I know it got close late, but the Steelers had a 24 nothing lead. Uh, it was all Steelers in that game, and that was an embarrassment for the Chargers. And I can tell you, and they commented how many times on the uh, broadcast, if you were listening to the game on Sunday, there was 80% Steelers. Well, have you ever been stadium. to the soccer stadium? Oh, they travel, though, the but Steelers. The Steelers it doesn't matter. When it was the Broncos, when I was there, a bad Broncos team with Trevor Simeon last year, it was 50-50. Yeah, and then you, you bring in its team like the Steelers. Yeah. You know, Steeler Nation travels everywhere, and you get a chance to go to San Diego. Wait till the Steelers ever play a game in Vegas. Yeah, I, tell, I was in New yeah. Orleans when the Steelers yeah. came, and the whole city was all Steeler jerseys. Yeah, man. you saw it whenever uh, the Penguins played here with the Golden Knights, uh, you know, black and gold up and down the strip. That's the reason I think it's an overreaction, and I'm probably going to be looking at the Chargers in that game. Okay, glad to know we're on the same side. Make sure you guys uh, write that down for Twitter in case Kelly ends up playing the Chargers. Time for us to take, <laughs> <laughs> time for us to take a quick break. When we return, it is time for VR Steam Game of the Week and Marco's Sandwich Game. That's right, guys. Marco's eating sandwiches. Who would ever thought? Looking for more NFL betting info? Then tune into the Presidential Address each week when Wager Talk's own Lawrence Presman, the Prez, along with Kelly Stewart, break down this week's entire NFL card. The show is available every week exclusively at Wager Talk TV. All right, guys, it's going to be a fun segment all season long. Each week, Yanni is going to give out his NFL Steam Game of the Week, and Marco's either going to bring us a sandwich or a trap game. Marco, I'm going to go to you first for this week's sandwich game. Well, Kelly, we got the deli. We got everything clean. The deli's back open. We're, we're ready to go for business, but I'll tell you what, get ready. It, I'm scared. Yeah, it, we might get shut down again after this one. We're going with the Washington Redskins plus that big fat 10 points against San Francisco. We talked about it in the last segment. Yeah, you can't have a worse scheduling spot for the 49ers. Right now, you're looking at the team, as they said, they came off the Pittsburgh Steeler game, then they followed that up with their bye week. Two weeks to prepare for that Monday night spotlight game against the team that was the buzz team, Cleveland. Uh, all see all off season leading in. Remember, San Francisco was that buzz team the year before. Yes, they were. They had something to prove. They got it. I thought they would have a flat spot last week against the Rams, but it was the division game, and the Rams are the team that went to the Super Bowl last year. So, the, you know, that's the team you're supposed to beat if you want to win the division. So they were up for that. Can they get it up for three weeks in a row? I don't think so. That's a personal question you have to ask them. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what, Kelly? It all depends on who the other person is. And you're not getting up. You're not going to keep it up with Washington, okay? This is like the ugly chick at the end of the night, okay? Two o'clock, bar's closing. They're not going to be excited. They're it. not going to be excited about Washington. Now, they might be excited about next week's game. And what's a sandwich? What you just did, what you got coming next. They got the suddenly undefeated Carolina Panthers with Kyle Allen at quarterback making some noise. You know, Carolina looked dead in the water, and all of a sudden Cam Newton gets hurt, and Allen's uh, the savior. So I just don't see them here. Uh, this is a spot where I got to take uh, Washington. They got a win last week. Yeah, it was ugly. Yeah, it was against Miami. But maybe they'll buy in to Callahan. You know, he's, fight he's auditioning for a job. You know he's going to be trying. Let's go ahead and take Washington plus that big fat 10. San Francisco can come in here. I like it. Win by a touchdown. They can win, Just show up, and, you know, head on down the road. Okay. VR, give us your NFL steam game of the week. All right. I'm going to go with a total this week, and we already bet this. Uh, it's a steam play, obviously. A couple groups bet the total. Um, and I think it's simply taking advantage of perception of the line being a little bit too short on a total, and that's Buffalo against Miami. Um, when you look at Miami, that's what you see, a, a team that averages only eight points per game. Um, and when you look at these two teams combined, I think they're one and nine to the under. But with that said, there's always a regression and a progression towards the mean, and, and more importantly, 
the NFL market's extremely efficient. I say it all the time, and it corrects itself. And here, it just its total is open just way too low at under that 40 mark. Again, it sounds cliche, but styles make fights, and they make games and matchups as well. And even though you haven't seen Miami putting up a, a ton of points, and now they're going up against this Buffalo defense, which you expect um, is even better than what they faced. It's also a team that they play twice a year. It's also a team they know very well. Um, and uh, the weather in Buffalo is supposed to be pleasant for this time of the year on Sunday. I think it all looks towards an over, and I agree with the wise guys that steamed it. I think as long as you get lower than 41, you're good. All right, well, right now we're sitting here at 40 and a half. I'm with You're you, good. VR. It is time for us to take a quick break, but when we return, it's time to walk the dogs. Walking Dogs is up next. Hey, guys, you know you're having a great season when you go 2-0 and on Sunday, 2-1 and for the week in the NFL, and your win percentage drops. I'm old school. I still like having that one and only game of the month. My NFL game of the month goes this Sunday. My NFL regular season run, now 19, 7, and 1, 73% in the NFL. College football, 13 and 5, 72% the last three weeks, 35, 20, and 1, 64% going back to last December. Save $30 off my seven day all access package. When you go to Wager Talk, you go to the Ralph Michaels page. Seven day all access. $99. Put in code RM30 and pay only $69 for the next seven days. And it includes that big 5% play that normally sells for $40 on Sunday. Be a part of a great Ralph Michaels October football run. Welcome back, you guys. No, this is my favorite portion of every single show because I love the underdogs. We all know Yanni likes to have a little sprinkle on the money line. We all know I love to have a little sprinkle on the money line. So <laughs> tell me what dogs are barking <laughs> this week, VR. Yeah, th this is a sprinkle fest for this Sunday on, on week seven. Um, how quickly is this season going by, it's, it's Marco? Way too Can you fast. believe it? Jesus. We're we sound like fun. old people. We're having fun. I know. I, I say that every year, but it's like it just moves so quickly. Um, what was I? Sprinkle fest. A sprinkle <laughs> fest. There we go. <laughs> Couple, well, there's a lot of money line dogs that are alive. I mean, just looking at this board real quickly, Saints are a live yeah. money line dog. Baltimore's a live money live dog. Yeah. Uh, but let's just stay with the lock. Denver Broncos Thursday night. Right. Sprinkle till you're, <laughs> you know, run out of money. You All right. Four, you currently plus till you're word. broke. Till you're broke. Oh man. <laughs> also like, oh yeah, I do like that Saints money line. All right, Marco, who's your barking dog for this week? Uh, and I'm not barking for you this week, okay? All right. I took all the fun out of it. Sorry, guys. You did. Sorry. Uh, we're <laughs> we're going to go to one of the ones you just mentioned, Baltimore at Seattle. Like right it. now, the stock is so high. How balanced Seattle. is that offense for yeah. Baltimore? Yeah. They're, they're fun to they're, watch. They're getting it now, finally. And the thing with Seattle is this has been a one-man show. Right now, to me, if the season ended today, the MVP is Russell Wilson. He has carried this team on his Shoulders with his arm, with his feet, and against Cleveland, what he kept doing and was driving me crazy is no, they weren't leaving anybody to spy on him. To, you know, they were going back into coverage, and nobody's in the middle. They're turning their backs on him. He sees that. Once he breaks the first line of containment, there's 20 yards before anybody's near him, and he was making big runs. And I realize mobile quarterbacks, there's not a lot of them in the league, and it's tough to prepare for them. Baltimore knows how to prepare for a mobile quarterback. They see one in practice every single day. Russell Wilson's not going to have those big runs this week against Baltimore. That's one thing. And you look at Seattle. This is a team that although they're winning, they're not winning by margins. You throw out the Arizona game, the rest of their wins are by four points or less. They beat Cincinnati by one. They beat Pittsburgh by two. That's the game Big Ben got knocked out. Uh, they beat the Rams by one, and then the four-point win over Cleveland. And they shouldn't have got the win over Cleveland. Freddie Kitchens is an idiot. I don't want to talk about that. Okay. I, you know, that's for another day. They're, my, they're, they're on my current do not bet list because Freddie Kitchens is getting out coached each and every single week. Right. Baker aside... I understand Baker thinks he's a new Brett Favre, but yeah. 
He keeps trying. Yeah, new new show rule. No more Freddy Kitchens because otherwise I'm going to walk off and quit. No more Freddy Kitchens? Well, at least not for this week, please. How about we put Freddy Kitchens versus Anthony Lynn? How about you put me versus Anthony <laughs> me versus Anthony Lynn. Me versus Freddy Kitchens and see who wins. That's right. how angry I am at the man right now. I'm, I'm taking this one. Uh, I think that this is a spot that Seattle – also, last week they benefited from four turnovers, as you said, from uh, Baker just, you know, throwing the ball in a tr double cover. I mean, he, like you said, he it has works the, at, It works at Oklahoma against teams that don't play defense in the Big 12. That gunslinger mentality gets you in trouble. I, you're not going to see that with Lamar Jackson. They keep, you know, he's throwing the football this year, but they still have the reins on him. I like Baltimore. I think they go in there, win this game outright, and yes, am I allowed? Go ahead, Berlin. A little sprinkle. Atta boy. Okay. Little getting little better. Getting better. Get sprinkles little getting little better. Getting better. I'm trying. You should be like the salt bay where you just like throw it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's time for us to tease you a little bit. That's next on Bet on It. If you like betting on horses, be sure to check out wagertalk.com's own SIG, who zeroes on one racetrack at a time, offering his handicapping skills. Visit his homepage daily for his top selection in each race free. If you want all his selections for that track, you can get his full racing report for just $9. Okay, guys, you told Johnny Detroit you wanted a teaser segment. Maybe you should tell him again just this week just to give him a little more grief because we like to make fun of Johnny. But we're going to keep it, keep it rolling here. Last week's teaser, Marco. We hit one in. If you say his name again, I'm going to be pissed. Uh, or maybe that was VR. So no, I, I, had Cle I had Cleveland. Yeah, you had I Cleveland, had and I also teaser. teased it, and I was furious. Well, we got, they got there on the teaser. They only lost by four. Oh, okay. Then it was the other side of the teaser that yeah. I lost. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, the Titans. Yeah. 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 Yeah, thanks, Marco. All right, guys. Anyway, <laughs> you're, like, you're like the guys on Twitter. I, I I go eight and three on the two shows combined last week, and she's giving she's giving me grief for the teaser. I mean, that's all I you have. You are to, that. I know. I'm that, that Twitter. Guy. You, you, you know. lost. You lost the sandwich game. Way to go, Marco. Yeah. Sorry, I went four and one. Yeah. <laughs> all right, VR. I'm gonna go to you first. NFL two team teaser. <laughs> Pretty please. Again. <laughs> We're teasing numbers here in case you haven't been following the show throughout the season. We're not teasing teams. It's irrelevant. I mean, usually you want to tease a side. You lean that way or the, there, that's the sharp side. It's preferable. But what you're really doing is trying to get the best of certain key numbers in your teaser. Um, unfortunately, with where the lines are now, where I see some value is a six and a half point teaser, but the juice is a little bit high. So you got to shop and get the right number or else it's not even worth it. Uh, but the, the, the two games I think that do offer some value at that six and a half is Brian, definitely Detroit at home. Okay, I was oh. going to say while you're, while you're, before you go over that. So at six, I always say don't lay more than 120. At six and a half, don't what lay. What is it all over the town? I mean, I don't even. 130, I'll 140. You can, you can find 130, 135. I'm yeah. just making sure what the max is for yeah. those at home because we know that not I everybody has the same I wouldn't go more than 130. I mean, okay. it's so hard to beat. If you're laying 140s, one, like those kind of teasers. I just want to clarify because I know a lot of guys don't have the ability to shop around, but mm -hmm. I also do think it's kind of our job to educate people. Oh, absolutely. And, and a lot of betters, you're so right, don't have outs. Like, we have options. We could walk down the strip and you have I tell people options. this all the time. Fire your bookie if he doesn't give you what you want. Oh, Kelly, your three-team teaser only pays – or three-team – Parlay only pays a thousand one. Well, fire him. Especially like nowadays, trust. nowadays yeah. where there's so much competition out there. If you're not getting a, a book that's giving you a benefit somehow, uh, move to the yeah. next one. It, ask, just ask. You can say, hey, you know what? You're charging me too much. They have a phone. They can call and say, hey, I'm counsel and such. I need you to change this. Teasers. That's what I mean. They give rebates. You could yeah. bring the lines down. There's so much you can do. And if you're not taking advantage of it, I say it all the time. Just like. On the casino floor, there's a lot you could do, but that's for another video. The, the, again, Detroit at, at six and a half, I think Detroit, because you're getting them up over a touchdown. We're going through three, we're going through seven. And, and the other um, home dog that I would take up the double digits is Cincinnati Bengals, the winless Cincinnati Oof. Bengals at home against Jacksonville, simply because you're getting double digits at home. Um, and Cincinnati winless, I mean, come on, you got to show up, right? Mine, uh, I agree with Detroit. I have Detroit there. There are a couple rogue one and a halfs out there. Yeah. It's, it's key. If you can get the one and a half, then you don't, have, six, exactly. you don't have to use the six and a half point teaser. Uh, so shop around, see what you can do. If you can't, I'm okay with the six and a half point teaser because you have to get this over the touchdown to get the seven and a half. The other side of it is I'm looking at the Chargers. 
Uh, you're going to get them at plus eight or eight and a half uh, with the teaser. Yeah. And I'm looking at this one, and it's pure and simple. They were embarrassed, totally embarrassed on uh, Sunday night. And they're on the best place that they could be. It was on the road. This team, you know, I, how can you play in a stadium that's supposed to be your home and you look around and there's 80% of the stadium with terrible tiles rolling around? That has to be deflating to you as a player that, you know, you have no support there. Uh, and it's going to be that way till they get a state. And hopefully when they get their own stadium, it changes. But, they're already talking about moving them again. Yeah, it, it's – it's not good, but I like them here. I do, this is based Makes on, sense. do you see Tennessee getting separation from the Chargers in this game? Tannehill even starting, even, right? Tannehill. Yeah, yeah, but e even if it was Mariota, it doesn't matter to me. I don't see a benefit one way or the other. Maybe Tannehill has a little chip on his shoulder from the Miami situation, but I don't think Ryan Tannehill is some elite quarterback. Barely, I would give him probably yeah. a C, C yeah. average. Uh, Mariota, I may even give a B minus to on certain days. I I'm not sold on the sole line. We know that their special teams aren't great. Vrabel's getting frustrated. The guy that was super ballsy last year is now getting really conservative. And we've seen it when the Chargers have fallen behind, they have the capability to come back and make a game out of it. We saw they were down 24 0 and they were, you know, an on onside kick away from, you know, possibly. You know, getting to the game against the Steelers, which never should have got that close. So they do have an offense that can come back. I don't think they get blown out. I'll go ahead and take them. Now, Tennessee has the opportunity to stick it to me two weeks in a row on the teaser. One week I went with them, one week I'm going against them. And remember what I said about, you know, crossing the fence. Mountain oysters could get in trouble. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, guys. We now have oh. teased you, so we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to bring you some TNA with Ralph Michaels up next on Bet on It. Did you know every Tuesday is $2 Tuesday at wagertalk.com? We pick the hottest handicapper and offer his best bet for just $2. This is a great way to introduce yourself to the winning handicappers at wagertalk and sportsmemo.com. I'm Yanni the Greek. I stated last week, if you like money, Let's lower your overhead. Let's increase your ROI by jumping on for a week. And how did I respond? Going 10 and four in college football for 71%, six and three in the NFL for 67%, and threw in a four and one in MLB playoffs for 80%. So here's what we're gonna do this time around. You're gonna get an entire week for only $59. The price of three days for the entire week. You know we're gonna be unloading on Thursday night, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So jump on board one time only. Pay for three days, get the entire week. Use the coupon code below, $59. Welcome back to Bet On It. It's time for one of our most popular segments, TNA with Ralph Michaels. Ralph, people love these stats you dig up. Probably most notably myself, this year road teams have been cashing tickets. Talk to me about your lovely stat there. Well, we're all we're usually going to get a regression to the mean with the NFL because right. the teams are so closely paired from top to bottom. This year, a little extended with, you know, let's say New England to Miami. But, you know, again, road teams, something you have to keep an eye on this year. If you just blindly bet every road team this year in the NFL, you're 55, 33 and two, 63.5 percent against the spread. I've just been blindly betting road teams. How about this? If you bet every away dog, let me give you the straight up record first. The average line of the away dogs this year in the NFL is 5.8 points per game. So you're getting a solid money line, 27 and 32. Only five games under 500 straight up wow. betting away dogs. Those away dogs against the spread, 38 and 20, 65.5% against the spread. Well, let's hope they keep barking through this week. And unders, you know, we've seen the pass interference. We've seen the... I think 43 different quarterbacks have started. It'll be 44 this week with Tennessee making the change. Scoring is down 2.2 points per game from last season to year to date. Over-unders 38, 49, and 3, 43.7% to the over, 56.3% to the under. Now one of my favorite long-term stats. This goes back to 2012. The record is wow, but I keep betting it. It doesn't change if... You have an NFL double-digit home dog. Okay. This week, you know, Washington, San Fran was early. It's nine and a half. But that really doesn't change anything. New England and the Jets on Monday night, nine and a half to ten. It's not as if, though, you're saying, 
oh, the record changes from good to bad. It's the thought process of being that much better of a team going on the road against an opponent you know you can beat. It's the home dog saying, we know we're the inferior team. We have to slow the pace down, run the ball. Double-digit home dogs in the NFL since 2012, four overs, 27 unders. Wow. 87.1% going back to 2012. And let's not forget, double-digit home favorites have been 60-plus percent. Home favorites of 11 or more in the NFL, 47, 23, and 2, 67 percent. So that old adage, you can't lay 200 in baseball, totally wrong. You can't lay double digits in the NFL, totally wrong. Don't fall into those. Couple, two specific ones we're going to talk about. Away teams off a close win when both teams scored 31 or more points. Your offense is going well. Your defense allowed a lot of points. You were in a battle going back and forth, a close game being four points or less. That's the Arizona Cardinals this week. They were in the battle since 2010. Those teams over under 69% to the under. Wow. 29 unders, 13 overs. Again, that's a nine year process. And lastly, we have the San Francisco 49ers. We have the New England Patriots. We have a team that's undefeated from week six on. So you're either five and zero, oh, you're either six and zero. Oh. You have a win percentage of 100%. You're the favorite now. We know those teams are laying the premium price against the spread since 2012. Win percentage of 100% and a favorite, 13 and 32 against the spread, 29 point. 1% since 2015 away favorites 2 and 12 that San Francisco this week against the Giants. So again, we know oh, it, Redskins. those shows, ex excuse me, against the Redskins. We know the shows you do with all the bookmakers, you know, you have these undefeated teams and imagine I should have pulled New England out of the mix because they're just the ones that are just they, stupid they good. It, yeah, I imagine when I pull New England out of that, how bad the record's going to be for those undefeated teams from week six on. So yes, San Fran's played great. The 49ers look incredible, but when you're undefeated points. at this much, 29% against the spread since 2012. Woo, I love it. Always great stuff from Ralph. It is time to take our last break of the show, but when we return, it is best bet time. Want up to the minute scores and odds direct from Las Vegas? Then check out our Wager Talk odds page. You'll get all the latest lines along with moves as they happen from all the biggest books in Las Vegas, including Westgate Superbook, Circa, Golden Nugget, Win, Stations, CG, and South Point, just to name a few. Best of all, it's absolutely free. Hey guys, if you followed my plays on the college and NFL bet on it shows, you went eight and three last week. Well, if you like those winners, my premium plays have been crushing the books even more. Over the last five weeks, our college and pro football selections have gone 33 and 13, increasing my clients' bankrolls by over 61%. Our baseball playoff selections are eight and four for an additional 20% of profit. Want to get all of my selections? Then pick up a 30 day all access package for just $225. Use coupon code MD225 and get all of my plays in all sports and never miss a single winner, including my famous 5% major wager plays. This package normally sells for $325, but this week only just $225. Check it out on my homepage at wagertalk.com. We are back. There is only one thing left for us to do. Let's dive into our best bets of the week. I will go first. Ladies first. Why not? Uh, I like the Saints plus three here, guys. I don't care whether it's Mitch Trubisky. I don't care whether it's Chase Daniel. It doesn't matter. This is a Bears team off a of bye. This Bears team is kind of reeling a little bit. This is not the season that they thought that they were going to have. Saints, 11-5 and five as a visiting dog since 2016. Now, I know those are Drew Brees stats, but Teddy Bridgewater has been really excellent as an NFL starter. I've been really proud of him. He showed me a lot of gusto and proven that he could lead the Saints team. I think he leads them to a victory on Sunday over the Bears. I don't think I've ever heard anybody in an analysis ever say I was proud of somebody you're proud, of you're proud of Teddy Bridgewater. I, I do because I think he's really shut up the naysayers and yeah. been able to prove a lot of people wrong and probably even including myself I had a Jags money line minus 125 ticket in my pocket last week I beat the number it closed 160 I'm like let's go and I did not get the result I wanted to get I had 
ticket in my pocket as well and got ripped up at the end of the game. You know, I, I was told I was supposed to lay the one, minus 110 instead of the money line, minus 125, because John Murray says uh, to me every week during the podcast, the games never land one, just in case you wanted to know. Yeah. I'm sure you, when you do your show with him this week, you're going to remind him of that. What's the over-under? of Your podcast is what, about an hour long? Yeah. I'm going to set the over-under at three and a half. Times did I get to say that? Yeah. Okay. Three and a half times you're going to, you're going to bring it up, and probably the sharp money's coming on the over. Because <laughs> <laughs> Kelly likes to remind people when I they were wrong. I just think it's funny. That's I did, all. Well, and he does it for a living. He makes the lines, and he's like, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, don't worry like, about it. Why would, you, why would you lay an extra 15 cents? You don't need it. Yeah. <laughs> See, I do it with one and a half. Okay. One and a half, I, it's an automatic grab the money, the money line. If you can get a money line at a buck 25, buck 30, uh, and the one and a half, I'll, I'll do that. Houston, Indianapolis, I'm not sold on Houston. Uh, right now, the bandwagon is getting pretty full. Everybody's jumping on uh, Houston. Uh, press of win last week at Kansas City, but we know about Kansas City. BR tells us about it every week. Um, they beat Atlanta the week before that. Right now, are there two, could there possibly be two worst defenses in the NFL than Atlanta and Kansas City's, and they played them on back-to-back -back weeks? They're going to be facing an Indianapolis team that does play some good defense and has had two weeks to prepare, coming off their bye week. Um, this is a spot where I'm looking at it. Both teams played Kansas City in their last game. Uh, they're going to look both. You know, one had a six-point win. One's going to had a seven-point win. But in the public's eyes, they're going to look at a 19-13 to 13 game that Indianapolis won, and then they're going to look at the Houston game and see 31-24, and they're going to be more in love with Houston because they scored so, you know, so many more points. And again, it was against bad defenses. I like Indianapolis here. Jacoby Brissett, you know, you talk about a backup quarterback. He has not played poorly. They're three and two. The one bad game they had, we were all on that game Raiders. big with the Raiders because it was a horrible spot for them. That was his statement game it was their the week after their home opener they had the two games on the road it was the first time he had played at home in front of the crowd in a meaningful game he played in the preseason after Andrew Luck got hurt but that was the first one where it counted and he went in there and won and showed everybody that everything's going to be okay the team had a letdown the next week looking past Oakland because they had Kansas City on deck on a Sunday night game it was a natural look ahead we're gonna and we saw how well they played against Kansas City that week they're going to do the same thing here. And Houston, on the flip side, other than they held Carolina to 16 points and they held Jacksonville to 12 points, are those offenses putting up a lot of points? No. The teams that they did play that have offenses, Saints scored 30. Uh, the Chargers scored 20. 32 they gave up to Atlanta, and they gave up 24 last week. I think Indianapolis wins this game. I've got them winning 27-20. I'll take them at home. Big, big, big you, game Marco. in the AFC. I do, I do like that spot for the Colts. VR has been over there. I've been watching him. He's been working hard. I, I have. Because I told you I love this board this week. I love so many plays that it's hard to narrow it down. But I gave a total for this team, so I'll give a total for the best bet as well. Um, I'm going to go on the same game that, that Marco was on, so now you have a possible parlay opportunity right. on the same game. Um, last year when they played, two out of three went under. The year prior, both went under. Um, and it looks like, at least you look over the last couple weeks, these teams have been scoring, and it sets up nicely to see some points. I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, this is a big game for these two teams. Let's not forget, there's a little playoff revenge from last year on the Houston side. And Colts are one game behind Houston in that division. Now I get it, this isn't the NFC East. So, you know, I'm not expecting a old Redskins versus Dallas type game. Uh, but with that said, I, I do think even stylistically, this total is just way too high with, with how these teams need to play this game. Uh, so for me, I, I, I like the under, um, I feel even more confident knowing that wise guys agree with me. They bet under the 48. That's why you're looking at 47 right now, even though the public's probably going to go over on that game. I just think we're getting the best of the number. I think the situation sets up nicely. And I think even matchup-wise, we're looking at a lower-scoring game than this total reflects. Let's go under the 47, I believe it is. 
Houston, Indianapolis. All right, guys, let's have a great week. I hope you enjoyed watching tonight's show as much as we did filming it. We would love to hear your thoughts on the show. So please jump in the comment section. Leave us something funny. You hate us. You love us. You want to, I don't know, say something mean to Marco. Anything goes in the comment <laughs> section. Also, give us a thumbs up. Hit the little subscribe button, the little bell in the corner. That way you guys always know when next week's show is out. Smash that like button. I they, hear that all the time. I, there you I go. Just,